Like, yeah, girl, yeah, good. Konnichiwa, my lovelies. Welcome back to that figure skating show. We are inching ever closer to the Grand Prix final, and NHK got me sweating. So let's get into the big story here in the ice dance. It was a big weekend for Canadians. Laurence Fournier Boudry and Nikolai Sorensen upsetting a veteran team to take gold. USA's Madison Chalk and Evan Bates will settle for silver and their teammates Caroline Green and Michael Parsons sing a blue rhapsody to the bronze, their first Grand Prix medal ever. A career best weekend for Fournier, Boudry and Sorensen after skating together for 10 years, finally break through to a Grand Prix gold. Their push starts in the rhythm dance. The performance was effortlessly beautiful, sensual, and believable. Big highlight for me was their diagonal step sequence. The change of positions throughout were sublime and silky smooth, exactly what a rumba calls for. Laurence's face is cracked by their PB of 85.66, a three point upgrade, giving them just a .66 lead over Chalk and Bates whom they're actually really good friends with. They do double date stuff all the time. It's super duper cute. And whom I thought really brought it this time compared to their Skate America debut. Evan, even being playful with the judges. I see you winking, begging for points. But it was all business in Sapporo and Chalk and Bates were not going down easy. They put down a season's best free dance scoring, 124.13 for a whopping total of 209.13. This is a six point improvement from their Skate America score. Like the rhythm dance, they looked much more relaxed and together, really weaving a beautiful story that you could tell is near and dear to their heart. However, it just was not clean. They lose it to the Canadians in the twizzles. Madison losing her balance, the twizzle is checked, her arms come apart, possibly losing an arm feature and she was reduced to a level three. So while beautiful, they didn't carry the same attack and speed as the Canadians. Honestly, this is not where I expected to see Madison and Evan at this point. They're still miles away from their PBs. But they did enough to make sure that Fournier Boudry and Sorensen have to have the skate of their lives to stay in first place. Skating after the Americans, the audience is yet again spellbound by this mercenary themed program. The transition in and out of their dance band was a delight to the senses for me. And they also outskated Madison and Evan in terms of speed and ice coverage. It was strong enough that even with a one point deduction for an extended lift, they were still in contention for that top spot. And you could tell at the end of the program, they knew they killed it, but they had to beat the Americans 124.13. That's the season's best score! And they do it, scoring a 124.75, less than a point ahead of the Americans to take their first ever Grand Prix gold. And to add the bacon bits onto this salad, they are also headed to the Grand Prix final in Italy which would also be another first for this team. Let's head on to the men. With the gold from Japan, Shoma Uno. His teammate Sota Yamamoto takes the silver and South Korea's Junwon Cha receives the bronze. Surprising no one, Uno is yet again numero uno, this time by 22 points. But it was definitely a journey getting there. Big fall on the quad toe resulting in no combo will leave him in second by five points as he heads into the free. 
Like the rest of the event, it was not a clean skate for Shoma, popping a quad flip into a double. However, his other four quads and two triple axles were executed with ease and command. That, married with his unmatched skating style and sensitivity, highlighted in elements like his choreo and step sequence, really clinched the gold for him this time. Although I did see judge number one give him a 7.75 in presentation. A little bit of a, mm, what you doing there, girl or guy, or however you self-identify. Just because he's Shoma Uno and he always brings it when he skates, uh, and a 7.75 is something really low for a skater his caliber. It won't hurt him too much because the lowest point does get thrown out in that average, but still, What's up? <laughs> Good enough to score a season's best 188.10 for a total of 279.76. Leading after the short program, Yamamoto will skate last in the free and will have to deliver a skate of the lifetime after Shoma put up huge points. He looks unfazed as he warms up this free with three authoritative quads, then Trouble decides to join the party and he has falls on both triple axle attempts. Finished six in the free, but his massive short score kept him in medal contention. Silver in Japan and his silver in France get him a spot at the Grand Prix final. And while Yamamoto finished six in the free, Chun Wan Cha of South Korea sat six after the short. The Korean came back with a vengeance in the free, lands two of the best quads I have ever seen Jun Wan do, ends his next to clean James Bond free with that signature outside in a bower and hits a big boy Ting's ending position while he receives a standing ovation from the crowd in Sapporo. His best free skate of the season so far puts him in second in the segment and he bounces out of Japan with his second bronze medal of the year. Now these three medalists are looking pretty good for their chances to head to the Grand Prix final, but we still have one event next week, so it will be a wait and see. And speaking of the Grand Prix final, Tomono Kazuki from Japan finished fourth and Adam Xiaohimfa of France finished fifth, so both of them are on the bubble for Italy. Heading to the women where my prediction was wrong. It was Ye Lim Kim from Korea who took the gold medal and my original pick for gold, Kaori Sakamoto from Japan took the silver and her teammate Rion Sumiyoshi takes bronze despite an oh my god fall on her opening quad toe, delivers a valiant free skate to put her onto the podium. But let's start with the 19-year-old Kim, who seemed completely unfazed, going up against a world champion on home ice. She finished first in the short, overtaking Sakamoto by four points. But Sakamoto puts it down in the free. Sakamoto looked focused and determined to make sure Ye Lim had to rip that NHK title away from her. Her Sia free is aggressive and fast. Just a small blip of momentum with a mistake on the triple-triple in the second half, building emotion with the chorus of Elastic Heart in that engaging choreo sequence as she winds up for her final and iconic traveling three-turn triple loop, and it's a big pop. That will cost her about five to six points, and she knows it as she grabs her head in frustration and disbelief. The 133.80 score will give her top spot in the free. Although being ahead of Sakamoto is new territory, Kim seems yet again unaffected by the pressure.
She doesn't win the free, finishing a point behind the Japanese champion. But overall, she walks away with 204.49, three points higher than Sakamoto's total score. It's been a golden season so far for Ye Lim, winning her first senior international gold at the Challenger Series event. And here becomes the first Korean woman to win Grand Prix gold since Yuna Kim in 2009. This means Kim and Sakamoto both took gold and silver this season and have officially qualified for the Grand Prix final with Isabeau Levito from the USA. Sumiyoshi and Rinka Watanabe, who finished fifth, are now on the bubble. So both will be waiting until next week's Grand Prix of Espoo to see if they will be going to Italy. Let's head on to pairs, the only predictable but still exciting event here at NHK. Japanese team of Riku Mura and Ruichi Kihara got that Midas touch for gold yet again. Silver goes to the United States of America's Emily Chan and Spencer Akira Howe. And bronze will go to Brooke McIntosh and Benjamin Mimar of Canada. Not a whole lot of twists and turns in this pair's event. Each team holding their podium positions from the short all the way into the free. And of course, the Japanese team of Mira and Kihara take the gold in a big way. They start off their NHK with a PB in the short program, 78.25, crushing their previous by five points. Huge reaction from Riku, seemingly always surprised by their own brilliance. Like, yeah girl, you're yeah good. Gold was theirs to lose in the free. The triple toe, double toe, double toe combo, not effortless, but an improvement from Skate Canada. Other small mistakes like the touchdown on that throw triple lutz and a mischoreographed lift in the middle speckled this otherwise strong skate. Their speed and aggression is coupled effortlessly with thoughtful choreography and delicate skating. It's good enough for a 137.91, almost identical to their Skate Canada score, leading to a new PB in their total score of 216.16. And of course, their reaction gives us everything and more. Big congratulations to Emily Chan and Spencer Akira Howe for their second silver medal of this Grand Prix season. Improving on Skate Canada, really loved that last position in the reverse lasso lift. Emily has exquisite extension. They have such a great connection for being together for such a short amount of time. But they will definitely need to improve in areas like their speed, consistency, and making that twist bigger and cleaner. But a pair free skate score of 120 plus is exactly where a team of this caliber wants to be, especially as they head into the Grand Prix final. But big story here, especially for Canadian fans, Benjamin Mimar and Brooke McIntosh take home their first ever Grand Prix medal. New young Canadian team, McIntosh is just 17 and Mimar is 21. They began skating together in 2020, making their partnership official just days before the pandemic shut down everything. So a lot of virtual training and team building for these two, but whatever they did, it is paying off. Gorgeous elements like this throw a triple flip highlight this free. For a new team with minimal mileage, it is very easy to shy away from complex choreography and transitions to focus on executing your elements nicely and cleanly, but not these two. Making great use of transitions and commitment to expression to enhance the elements and program. For example, I love that choreo break in the midpoint where she does a standstill spiral and their exit of their final lift. They also commit completely to the Les Miserables character. Their bronze in Japan and a fourth at Skate Canada won't be enough to get them to the Grand Prix final, but expect to see these two on more podiums in the future. Well, that's it for your NHK Trophy recap. Are you sweating?
Are you still trying to do the math in your head to see who's making the Grand Prix final? Well, I'm bad at math, so you let me know in the comments below, and we head to our last Grand Prix before the final. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. I know you la 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 loved that video. So subscribe so you don't miss anything, and watch more videos, because you loved it so much.